By 1827 in Tasmania, a newspaper report highlighted the increasing abundance of rabbits throughout the colony, with thousands observed running freely on some extensive estates. We understand that there are no rabbits whatsoever in the elder colony, New South Wales. This clearly shows a localized rabbit population explosion was underway in Tasmania in the early 19th century. At the same time in NSW, rabbits are bred around houses, but we have yet no wild ones in enclosures. He also noted that the scrubby, sandy rubble between Sydney and Botany Bay would be ideal for farming rabbits. Enclosures appear to mean more extensive rabbit farming warrens, rather than cages. The first of these, in Sydney at least, was one built at Elizabeth Bay House, a preserve or rabbit warren, surrounded by a substantial stone wall, and well stocked with that choice game. In the 1840s, rabbit keeping became even more common, with examples of the theft of rabbits from ordinary people's houses appearing in court records, and rabbits entering the diets of ordinary people. In 1857-1858, Alexander Buchanan, overseer for F. H. Dutton's Anlaby Estate in the mid-north of South Australia, released a number of rabbits for hunting sport. Their population remained fairly stable until around 1866, presumed to have been kept in check by native carnivores and protected by an act of parliament. However, by 1867, it was out of control. The population explosion was ascribed to the disappearance of native predators, but the emergence of a hardier breed by natural selection has subsequently been attributed to their spread. The current infestation appears to have originated with the release of 24 wild rabbits by Thomas Austin for hunting purposes in October 1859 on his property, Barwon Park, near Winchelsea, Victoria. By 1866, the Geelong Advertiser reported 50,000 having been killed by hunters. While living in England, Austin had been an avid hunter, regularly dedicating his weekends to rabbit shooting. Upon arriving in Australia, which had no native rabbit population, Austin asked his nephew William Austin in England to send him 12 grey rabbits, 5 hares, 72 partridges, and some sparrows so he could continue his hobby in Australia by creating a local population of the species. At the time, he had stated, the introduction of a few rabbits could do little harm and might provide a touch of home, in addition to a spot of hunting. William could not source enough grey rabbits to meet his uncle's order, so he topped it up by buying domestic rabbits. One theory as to why the Barwon Park rabbits adapted so well to Australia is that the hybrid rabbits that resulted from the interbreeding of the two distinct types were much more suited to Australian conditions. Many other farms released their rabbits into the wild after Austin. The rabbits were extremely prolific and spread rapidly across the southern parts of the country. Australia had ideal conditions for a rabbit population explosion. With mild winters, rabbits were able to breed the entire year. With widespread farming, areas that might otherwise have been scrub or woodlands were, instead, turned into vast areas with low vegetation, creating ideal habitats for rabbits. In a classic example of unintended consequences, rabbits had become so prevalent within 10 years of their introduction in 1859 that 2 million could be shot or trapped annually without having any noticeable effect on the population. It was the fastest spread ever recorded of any mammal anywhere in the world. Today, rabbits are entrenched in the southern and central areas of the country, with scattered populations in the northern deserts. Since their introduction from Europe in the 19th century, the effect of rabbits on the ecology of Australia has been devastating. They are suspected of being the most significant known factor in species loss in Australia. Rabbits are believed to have had an immense impact on the abundance of natural resource availability, primarily concerning overgrazing. The rabbits would first deplete the natural pasture vegetation, and would then resort to consuming woody vegetation, which included small shrubs, and the leaves and bark of trees. The extent of plant species loss is unknown at this time, though rabbits are known to often kill young trees in orchards, forests, and on properties by ring-barking them. Rabbits are also responsible for serious erosion problems, as they eat native plants, leaving the topsoil exposed and vulnerable to sheet, gully, and wind erosion. The removal of this topsoil is devastating to the land, as it takes many hundreds of years to regenerate. By 1887, losses from rabbit damage compelled the New South Wales government to offer a £25,000 reward for any method of success not previously known in the colony for the effectual extermination of rabbits. The commission received 1,456 suggestions, including several schemes involving biological controls, 
but none was found to be both safe and effective. A royal commission was held to investigate the situation in 1901. Once the problem was understood, various control methods were tried to limit or reduce the population of rabbits in Australia. These methods had limited success until the introduction of biological control methods in the latter half of the 20th century. Shooting rabbits is one of the most common control methods and can successfully be used to keep already low populations in check while providing food for people or pets, though it is ineffective for large-scale eradication. It seems like the issue with rabbit overpopulation in Australia continues and has led to a staggering population of nearly 200 million today. The persistent growth of the rabbit population poses ongoing challenges for the ecosystem and agricultural activities. Efforts to control their numbers have faced difficulties, as the rabbits adapt well to the Australian environment and reproduce rapidly. We are so grateful that you joined us on this incredible journey. We hope you enjoyed watching our videos and learned something new. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Your support means a lot to us and helps us grow. Thank you for being part of our community.